This is the Palm Beach Casino in London, venue for the sixth Party Poker World Open, where online phenoms, tournament champions, and high stakes cash game players will clash at our TV table. This year, six heats will play out with the winner of each heat going straight through to the final and the runner up getting a second chance in our playoffs. There's $480,000 in the prize pool and $200,000 for the winner. And tonight, we kick it all off with eight players who include WPT champions, EPT winners, and World Series of Poker bracelet holders, as well as our returning champion, Phil Locke, and they all have one aim, to be crowned World Open 6 champion. But with the strongest 48-player field ever assembled for this tournament, there's no easy route to the top. Big smile for a pro in the world. I'm psychic, but there's so much static going on in my head. What do you want to see on the phone? That's what I want to know. Diamond! I can't work. Gould looks like he's been hit by a freight train. Whoa, he moved her off her hand. You call me with 10 high, punish him. There wasn't a river, there'd be no fish. Come on, let this come home! We're really <laughs> <laughs> What a fish cake. Yes, this is how you win tournaments. I think you have a nice pair. <laughs> that is astonishing. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna fold. Thank you. A lot of love in this room. I can take the pain. How do you like the apple pie? I've been having so much fun. I can't risk going bust because i got to get even. You do any crazy loot here that puts 30k in or 60k in that hand. That's the fun part, right? Put a camera in front of Fabrice and he just wants to be a hero every hand. It's the technique I use. I'm a dinosaur. And let me introduce you to the lineup for this seat of the Party Poker World Open 6. In seat number one, it's Toby Lewis, one of the bright young stars of British poker. He recently won EPT Villa Mora 2010. In seat number two, it's Dale Hoy, a UK businessman who owns an online poker skin and is no stranger to the UK TV tournament circuit. In seat number three, it's Heather Sue Mercer. She had two deep runs in the 2010 World Series of Poker, including the very difficult 25K 6 Max. She hails from New York, where she has a shop, and I can confirm they do have the best cookies on earth. And in seat number four, it's Huck Seed, and what a champion indeed. 2010 World Series of Poker Tournament of Champions winner. He also has many bracelets, including a main event World Series of Poker bracelet, and has nearly $6 million in live tournament earnings. In our next seat, it's Philip Grusum. He won the 2009 Asian Poker Tour in Macau, and recently final tabled WPT London's High Roller event. Next seat here is John Tabatabai from the UK and a truly international string of results for him. In 2009, he won the Aussie Heads Up Championship. In 2008, it was the All Africa Poker Tournament. In 2007, he was runner-up in the inaugural World Series of Poker main event for Europe. And in seat seven, it's Jason Gray from Australia. He also final tabled WPT London's High Roller event, and as well as a string of results in his native Australia, he has four World Series of Poker final tables. And finally, a character in our eight seat. It is Phil the Unabomber Locke. He is the returning reigning champion of the World Open. He also has a WPT title, and he's one of the most charismatic and even with this hair, recognizable faces in the game today. I'm sure it's going to be a very entertaining match so good luck to everyone let's get the cards in the air very exciting heat here at the world open six why because the defending champion is on the table though you might not recognize him he's got the red mohawk phil lock but i'm thrilled to be joined by someone hard to believe that this someone has won as much in poker as this man without actually winning a major title, Sorel Mitzi. And uh, welcome, Sorel. Like that's right. They call me uh, Sorel Side Event Specialist Mitzi. That's, <laughs> that's my name. I'm, I'm, but, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. It looks like a great heat to comment on. So, Now, which of these guys do you know? They're a former world champion, Huck Seed. You must recognize him, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've played quite a bit with Huck. Two of the people at the table, John Huggy Bear Tabatabai and uh, Phil Locke, are actually two of my really really good friends from uh, from poker 300,000 starting stacks yellows blues reds and green worth one two five and ten thousand respectively wow damn you seem very nervous John what's the tipple I'm nervous because like, I'm confused that he's called 20,000 
If you can't pronounce on the one well, hand, you could say, well, Dale knows what's going on. It's a, a light tip, open tip and a light tip, three bet. But still, with the sixes, tip, that's tip, that's like that's tough to do, right? That was unexpected. <laughs> Huck has no intention of playing this. Well, wow. Does he? No. I mean, Huck is so unpredictable. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts in a re-raise here, but it looks like he's going to release his hand. Now, should John ever be thinking about letting this go to a flop, or should, uh, you know, is this, are you, are you getting more money in here all the time? I mean... You know what? I actually prefer a call in this spot. Seeing the whole cards, I definitely would re-raise, but in this spot, it, it's kind of scary. I mean, t Tabby opens for an early position raise, gets re-raised by Phil Locke. He doesn't make a lot of moves uh, this early, as far as I know. This looks like aces, actually. It looks like Dale's got aces. It really does. I mean, what else could he play like this? Mr. Tabby to buy wants to smile, but he's... He's holding it in. You got me. You made me smile. It's really making me feel like I wish I'd just called that tickle instead of re-tickling the tickle. To be honest with you, I'm more worried about the hug over there rather than the tickle. There's far too many tickles going on. <laughs> I'm out of the tickling business. I wonder what Hoy's going to do. It's like he's come this far. Yeah, I mean, this type of player who cold calls a re-raise is probably going to call another raise here. Looks like he's going to call here. Well, the good thing going for Hoy, if there's anything good going for him, he's in position. I'm right. not sure. I think this pot, this pot might, at, at this stage, be too big for position to matter. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, uh, that's, I think that's going to slow down action. But I, I do think that Tab is going to um, fire out a continuation bet here. John's thinking, oh, that king might. He might actually, an ace king, he could have played like this and not wanted to lay it down. Right. Well, Tabby's going to see where he is right now. And cheap, John. Really cheap. To be honest with you, I actually thought was, those were 20,000s. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of bet freezes your opponent, and it makes them wonder. Too many people have heard the ticket. I think Hoy's right? only play here is to raise or to lay it down. And at this point, I'd, I'd definitely be laying it down as well. Still, let me ask you one question. What's going through your head right now? What are you thinking? What is tipple? This is where John's at his best in my mind. He, he sounds like he's just making polite conversation, but he is watching every move and he'll talk at Dale, try and get him to do the, what he wants. It does look that Hoy is very weak here, though. Wow, is that? Oh my. That's insane! That <laughs> is insane! And, like, Tabat Tabai is going to be of two minds here because, in my mind, he is one of the great readers of players in the game. On the other thing, I mean, just the straight logic of it, if you're on the internet, the man's called three bets cold, called the re raise, and then raised the flop for crying out loud. This is a crazy hand, and I honestly don't know what's going to happen here because. I mean, it's hard to commit any more chips when the king comes on the flop. You don't know where your opponent is. I mean, he could have, I, I guess he could have been slow playing an overpair. He could have He could have had ace-king. And, you know, the, the bet that Tabby made kind of looked like a feeler bet, see where he is in the hand. And now that he's been raised, it just, it's a very, it's a very tough spot to be in. And, you know, hopefully he can make the right read and uh, go with his hand. It looks like Tabby is really thinks that something's fishy. How much more is it? You know, just by the way he's looking and by the way, it just doesn't, the whole hand just doesn't make sense. Um, and if you have to pick a player in poker who doesn't mind going out with uh, with two queens on a king high board for 10K, I'm thinking John fits that mold. You can just tell that John thinks that there's something wrong with the way this hand is played. And I feel like he has that read. And we did have a little talk last night though. And you know, he was, he was asking me about certain situations, and you know, I basically told him to, to be playing on the tight side. So, I, oh, that's wow! That's brutal. He's been crushed. He has been. Was, is that ownage? I think that's a fair, the fair thing to say. Tabby cannot be feeling good right now. Join us after the break as action continues in this exciting heat here at the Palm Beach Casino in London for the Party Poker World Open 6.
Welcome back to the Palm Beach Casino. Play is underway here, so let's go back down to the table for more action. To me, Sorrell, he seems like a guy, Phil Locke, who, you look at the chip counts here, um, Dale, because of the big bluff. <laughs> Up to 395 and Tabat Tobias short stack. But Phil seems like one of those guys who, there were several years, maybe five years ago, when people almost considered him not a joke, but that he was entertainment and wasn't really a good poker player. But the last couple of years, or maybe the last year or two in particular, Phil's game has really, you know, come to a high level. Well, he's definitely been pulling some some big results lately. Like last year, he, he was runner up in this, and uh, he also won a big tournament. I can't remember exactly what it was, but wow, this is a big this is a sick hand. hand. This this looks like it's going to be a setup. I think we might see some blood here. No, I mean uh, Phillips opened up with the kings under the gun. Tabat Tabai's flat called with the tens, and and Locke has smooth called behind him with the queens. I guess nobody's going to be reopening the action unless Huck decides to get a little frisky with his 5-8. Well, they're getting frisky now. Seat out flops all the pairs, a straight. This is insane. And the last thing that Philip Grusom wants to see when you raise with Kings is four-way action and a coordinated board. He looks pretty sick. He's checked, Huck's checked, and Tabat Tabai, the worst hand bets. And how about Phil Locke? Look at that. I never connect. That's the problem. 6,000 he's lost in this hand. He should be walking away from the table right now. Shattered wrist, dislocated elbow, 42 stitches in the eye. Severed by genital nerve. So I can't really feel my nose. It's going to grow back. Did you ask Jennifer to do the washing up or that? And, uh, the when is Huck going to make this pay? Like well, Grissom's called as well. Tabat Tabai's actually drawing the best here. Grissom's in terrible shape. This is a really uh, dangerous board for an overpair. So I can't imagine Grissom or Tabby taking the lead anymore in this pot. Um, it's, it's a very dangerous and scary board for these, these overpairs. So. Uh, maybe Tabby will fire again, but I don't think I don't think Grusom is gonna give much more action with a with a bet and a call here. Right, Grusom's checked the flop. Now he's checked the check called the flop. Now he's checked the turn. Um, I mean, this is a weird one. Huxie just checked checked the turn, right? Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. I would I would have preferred to lead out on the turn there, but. Um, you think Huck is in serious danger of not having max value here? Definitely. I would have I would have loved the lead on the turn here. It looks like he's just going to get that one street of value from... Uh, I do believe Gruesome's going to call here. And then that kind of puts Tabby in a, in a tough spot. Um, uh, and like, I mean, just from Huck's point of view, like, okay, there was no flush draws out of there, but the way the action went on the flop looked like a like there was a flush draw out there a lot of the times, and to give him a free card like that, that's a mistake, right? I, I do think so. I, I don't think Grusom's going to fold here. I mean, Huck could easily be value betting ace nine, uh, even like a week or nine, so I, I doubt very much that Grusom's going to fold. And once Grusom does call, I think Tabby's put in a tough spot. Grusom's actually played this hand. I kind of he's, he's he's played it really well, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. Kings never got never got too excited about him. Wow, that's an amazing lay down by Grusom. He's lost. I've, <laughs> he's lost nothing. I think Tabby's calling here now. Now that uh, Grusom folded, but that was an incredible lay down. I by can Grissom. just hear Sorrell screaming in the commentary box right now. Me. <laughs> this is for you, Sorrell. Wow. <laughs> no. Con I, I congratulations, <laughs> Huggy. That was an amazing lay down. But he told me I should always call when there's a flush. I would fold queens on a flop like that. But he said that you should always call if there's like a flush and it's missed. Because people always bluff it on the river. Oh. If you had queens, would you have called? If I had a pair, I'd have called. I believe the cookies may be coming out, and this could be a massive play if she spiked the cookies. I mean, this is like the greatest. This is the greatest move in the world. You know? Look at this. 
Can you can we even close up on this? Look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. It says oh, apple pie on it. Yeah. I've Very only cute. heard like a little cookie really good things cookie. about these cookies. I almost I want to it. drop the mic and I go like get one. Like, stop the press. <laughs> it's called a life upgrade. I'm having a life upgrade. Raised 6,000 times. By the way, the. The, ha the happiness that I have by having this super cool cookie and that raise, they're not correlated. It might <laughs> seem like they're correlated, but they're not. It's hand <laughs> strength relative yeah. to chip betting. Uh, so Lox raised this to six, and Dale has cold cold, and Can I drive off? Do you mind head out. I get a carrot cake, too? I don't know if I have a second carrot cake. Have you got any more apple pie? I don't. I have. Oh, I feel strong. super powerful now. I got the last Did you make these yourself? Key lime. Yeah. Key lime. That's a great flop for Phil Lock, and it looks like we're going to see some action on this board. Wow, you're right. We have Hoy with top pair and a good kicker, and Phil Lock with the second pair and a flush drop. <laughs> Is it just you and me, Dale? That's it? I wonder if. Well, wow. that, that's weird. See what I mean about Phil Locke? He's just the most random player. You never know what he's going to do. Now, why would he check it there? And if you do check, are you checking to try and get Dale to bluff at it? And then if he is bluffing at it, are you raising? or? At this point, I would probably just check call. Uh, I'd, I'd rather lead than uh, check call, but I do like taking control of the pot. Check. Um, check. Wow. <laughs> back the trips. Maybe there is something in those cookies. <laughs> the hoy's not to know, obviously. Um, it's amazing how, right. how snug these players are playing. I mean, I feel like this pot should have been a lot bigger, just like the other ones. I, you know, I feel like Phil Locke. If he bet here, there would have been a lot of action, and it looks like he's going to get away cheap here and just check call. Right, pretty sure that Annette would have found a way to get all the chips in with the Queen Ada clubs on the flop, right? Rightfully I mean, so, yeah. I mean, she would have, like... I can't see what he's got. Absolutely. And she'd be walking oh, away better. saying standard, you know. Right, and she would be the favorite to win that hand as well, I do believe. I'm fine, thanks, Doug. Phil Locke, it looks like Phil played that... Uh, like a genius. A super genius. <laughs> An uber genius. Uber genius. He lost the minimum in that hand. If he bet the flop, he might have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Blinds are up now to two and four thousand. Dale Foy still out front with four seventeen. Huck and Philip and Jason, all positive progress, but maybe it's about money saved and not money earned. I mean, Phil Locke there, he's only 30,000 behind where he started. He could easily, easily be broke now. I honestly think something about that accident changed him. But you know, this, this table's actually been nothing like I expected, aside from the chat, of course, which has been lively. There hasn't been that much re-raising on this table, if you've noticed. There hasn't been, other than the big hand with the uh, pocket queens and the sixes, we haven't seen a lot of pre-flop re-raise action. There's been a lot of looking at seeing flops and calling raises, a lot more so than I thought there would be. It's true, and I wonder if Gruesome is thinking this is a good spot for a three bet. There, there's certainly players who would do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, looks like he just wants to see a flop here. I definitely don't mind a re-raise there, but I also don't mind a call. It's just a matter of mixing it up. That's an interesting flop. Both hit something here. Middle pair, flush draw. Huck is one of those guys, he's, he's sort of two people because there's the, the Huck who is the 1996 world champion and then there's sort of the... I can never be stylish as you when I put the chips in. I show you. It's a hang, it's a, it's a spatial hang flip, kind of. I, I would have folded, but I, I have to show you, yeah. <laughs> That's how Philip calls, you know? He, he bets like that and he calls like that. He takes his hand, he does the same thing every time. He, he takes the chips, 
He puts his hand out and then he drops the chips every time. How do you decide if you're Huck right now whether or not to, to double barrel here or to, to take the free card? Well, it depends on the board texture a lot. In this spot, I love a bet here because he has a hand with value and he also has a hand that can improve. I can't do it your way, so I have to go back to my own way. 60. Look at this bet as well. He's, he's actually bet the entire pot. 60K. Wow. That's a, that's I mean, a massive bet. That's, that's just weird, isn't it? That is a little weird. Yeah, he showed it again, the little twirl. And, I mean, when you do bet that, you kind of, if you're getting called, like, you're going to have to, you're not leaving that money in there, are you? Right. Or what? Well, when Huck bets that big, it kind of deters Philip from, re -ra from raising, uh, even with a hand as strong as, like, ace-queen, um, because Huck is doing the betting for him. So it's kind of freezing Philip in a way, and... and forcing him to just call. This is a great card to barrel again. I'm not sure if Huck's going to be able to do it because he does have showdown value with his deuce, but not very much. I mean, actually, come to think of it, there's really nothing Huck is beating other than, like, maybe an ace-high flush draw, which I don't think Philip would have played this way. But hasn't this card on the river, if he back, if he makes a big bet here, it's really polarizing his, his hand, right? Because the draw got completed. If he really had, like... A big hand, 10 jack is well in Phillips' range. or Right. Well, I think Huck is good enough of a player to, to value yeah, bet check. a good queen here. So check. I don't think it's that polarized. Are you? I will. No, no, are you? In England, they do last aggressor. Oh, they do last aggressor, OK. Pair. Yeah, so I figured now that he picked up a flush draw, he's going to call again, thinking there's another card coming, so I checked. Huck knows what these young guys are thinking. Don't forget, he was a whiz kid himself. When somebody has too much success too fast, when they're too young, it's very hard to handle. I remember uh, when I was first coming up and kind of winning when I was really young, and some old time player came up to me and he said, this is the worst thing that could happen to you is, you know, you just win so easily, you know, when you're first starting. So that's definitely, uh, Something that's really tough was tough for me when I was young because it came very easy to me and I was very successful when I was 21, 22 years old. For me, I like to I like to try to stay grounded. You know, I do a lot of yoga, I read a lot of Buddhism, meditate. I balance my poker by trying to get a lot of exercise. So I'm like out running barefoot in the park or in the forest or wherever you want to. You know, I like to be outdoors a lot um, and just. Just breathe and you know feel whatever I'm feeling and not think too much. In the poker world, there's not a lot of structure. You go and you play, you make your own schedule, you choose what games to play. And you can sit at home and never leave the house to play on the internet. So without that structure, you really have to balance it yourself. And uh, for me, you know, I, I think it's real important to uh, be in a really good physical shape and mental shape and just have like a good happy energy and because you play poker you know with your whole body and your your instincts and your spirit and your mind it's not just a mental game a lot of players they just think you know and they they just play with their mind but i think you are going to get a lot more out of it if you play with your whole being Welcome back to this exciting heat for the Party Poker World Open 6. The players are still fighting it out for that final table seat, so let's get back to the action. Still a full table of eight here. <laughs> Only missing half an arm. That's what? Phil Locke on the cast. I can't get anything right. I fall when everyone's bluffing. And half poor hole. John Tobias. Taba, a little rusty, isn't he? And he's just... These are the times I should play hands, like when you're out of the pods. Yeah. But I, can't, I just can't find... He's gotten all the tough decisions wrong tonight so far. But. What a disaster. Absolutely. from Lock. I don't know what's going on in his head, but sure is good. He's going to get strangled here. Big blind for C. Really? I always do that. 
Okay, how do you win the EPT? You got in good or bad? I feel like, and I don't know if it's true, that at least Locke feels that Huck just kind of reads him dry. You know, he's kind of got, that, or maybe he says that. Yeah, well, Huck is very good at reading players. He, he might be one of the best in the game. And, um, but Phil Locke is, al is also a seasoned pro, and I'm sure he's, he's good at, like, covering signs of strength and signs of, weak signs of weakness. Uh, I, I really like the way Huck is playing this hand so far, though. Just calling from the big blind. Re-raising from the big blind is just something that completely polarizes your hand. And I love the way Huck has played this so far. Just calling on the flop and calling on the uh, calling pre-flop. I would think that he's probably going to fire on the river. Like Huck would, I mean, uh, Phil would have played a lot of aces, hands that include an ace like this. So, I mean, Huck wants to try and get some value in case Locke was like checking the turn like to pay off the river with an ace or something like that. Or. Right, and I don't think that his hand is strong enough to check raise pucks. And I mean, you could check and, and play it as a bluff catcher, but I really I prefer betting and getting him to call with weak aces. And maybe he caught a queen on the on the river. Um, and I don't I don't expect Phil to continue continue with his hand. But you never know. This is televised poker. You know, people. Wow. Wow. It's funny you said that because <laughs> it's Phil Locke who said that he's invented the Phil Locke corollary, which is that is that uh, on whenever people are on television, yeah. they will bluff 25% more at a, at a minimum. Right. Maybe it, even more. Yeah. This is a weird spot for Huck, but I... I well, what's just, Phil repping? I don't understand. Is it two queens? Queen <laughs> five? I mean... Yeah, oftentimes well, people are it? repping so few hands that beat them, you know, you I don't could justify it. a call. It, it looks like, what it looks like he's repping is ace or queens specifically. That's like pretty much the only hand he could be repping here. I think he would bet again with ace queen on the turn. Uh, it's kind of too strong to check, check behind given that Huck just called out of the big blind. So the only hand that he's really repping is queens or maybe some sort of weird two pair. Like that queen he seven or queen, queen five. Queen seven, yeah. queen five, queen three suited, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't think Huck's going to fold. I mean. 64,000 to call here. It's, wow. That's amazing. He might not think Phil Locke is capable of doing that. Obviously, he doesn't read Phil Locke as well as I thought. And obviously, Phil Locke's not as scared of Huck's seat as, as he thought. Second level finishing up. The tight guys all still average. Gray, Mercer, and Toby Lewis very low on the V chip, but haven't lost many chips. Locke, though, the big bluff, bringing him back into form. He's also among the most aggressive on the table. I would think that at this point, in most tournaments of this structure, someone would be out. 3,000, 6,000. You know, the blinds are getting bigger, and the stacks, you know, are, Nobody has, nobody is like in push or fold mode even. You know, What's your now? explanation? I mean, and especially with the winner take all nature of this format. Right. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, it's not like everyone's getting bad hands. It's not like, you know, we haven't had situations where people haven't uh, been able to put chips in the pot. People are just playing very, very small pots. They're just like, I don't know, 2010 must be the year of the pot control because there's like, there's Phil Locke who checked his uh, second pair with the flush draw. There's also Phil Locke who just called with his queens where if he re-raised there would have been some serious fireworks. If you whack me, just get me for a little bit like 40. Don't don't get me like... The biggest pot was actually the third pot where uh, where Dale Dale Hoy took John Tabby off the, uh, the pocket queens and we haven't really seen any massive pots since then. He took him off the deep end and it was really funny. Phil was just saying to Dale, don't hurt me too bad this hand. Just take me for a little bit. And look at this cooler. <laughs> wow. Dale's raised pre-flop and flopped the nuts. Phil in the big blind with top pair. Phil just leads out, doesn't he? He yeah. just makes 12,000 with the the top pair. Is Phil Just, smart enough not to do too many two chips in this pot, or is he in trouble? Um, I think he's good enough to get away with enough heat. I'm not sure what Hoy's going to do. He, he seems like the type of player to slow play, but on this kind of board, uh, I feel like putting in a raise would be the best decision. 
Um, I'm just not sure what he would do, just based on what I've seen. So he does put in a raise. Well. Well. <laughs> I was gonna say there's no shame in folding, and now I guess it applies to me. Maybe there's no shame in me folding. <laughs> well spoken. If I had top pair and showed it and folded, would that be a good or bad move? Theoretically. It depends what he's got. Right. If he had a beat, it would be right, the right thing to do. Yeah. Right? And he looked right. I feel like Phil's gonna fold, especially after that comment. Wow. I, I, I mean, look again, Phil Locke just looks like a that was a queen. genius. Just gets away right? uh, <laughs> the lowest amount he could possibly lose Did in I that situation. I didn't have a queen. Pat Frace, I'm sorry, they, they have to be x ray glasses. I mean, <laughs> like. He, he, he's unbelievable. It's almost like he's played today with the cards face up. But even then, it's been more than that because, like, the movie made on Huck, like, actually, if you knew what he had, you'd never make that move. Right. It's amazing. I feel like he's <laughs> super using these people. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I had the hand pleasure of out. watching Phil on Long the way. internet set the, the Guinness record recently for the longest what poker session go, continuous. He played 115 hours straight in Las Vegas in a 2550 cash game. And I'm telling you, he looked fresh as a daisy by the end of it. You could watch the whole thing. I think that, I think that's what's made him a changed man. Looks like a lot of his game is just picking on, like finding good spots to squeeze. Oh wow, I can see what you did. Finding good spots to be aggressive, like playing. I feel like he's playing like a good, solid, tight, aggressive game, and uh, just using his image to take advantage of uh, of situations. Crab mac. I thought it, okay. Well, you thought you were gonna go for a crab mac if No, no, no. I'm waiting to see how much more subby they've got here. See the flop. Boom. Three ways. The limper and the blinds. Oh. Hobby's finally flopped the best hand in forever. Ten thousand. Of course he is. Raised to thirty thousand. So strong. Just like that, you just crab macify me. So <laughs> strong. No, crab macification is limp raise. This was a bet race. This is <laughs> wow. He's just, is... just so on to him. He just knows exactly what Tabby has here. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like this. Just every situation I've seen Phil Locke be in, he's just made. Yeah, but Dubai, easy game, easy game. Again, not necessarily the right move, but the correct move in the situation. And I know Sorrell saying that's what he gets for beginning it's <laughs> playing a hand. He should have folded in the small blind. <laughs> well, Sorrell, uh, what can I do? I'm sorry. I just thought I could take a pot off Phil, but no, you know. And just... My hand played itself. Well, the blinds are going to hit five and ten thousand now, and that's time to speed things up, especially for Tabat Tabai, who's only going to have just over ten big blinds. Phil Locke, kind of running over this table, isn't he? Although, hoy, the chip leader. Are you cultivating on us? Could get I'm very cultivated. quick from He's here. <laughs> As in a couple of these players don't have more than a all-in open or an all-in re-raise, and that's what they'll be thinking about. And that is what the doctors ordered for Tabat Tabai. Maybe the worm's gonna turn here. He'll go with these. Wow, Tabby has a monster here. I, I, with his stack, I mean. <laughs> Oh, Huggy. <laughs> I mean... It's so problematic, right? Even yeah. Ace, King, with Ace King's not that big a hand, is it? No, he's just inviting people to call. I mean, I see what he's doing, but I, if, if I'm going to raise with that hand and try to get, basically, I'm trying to induce a shove. I'm not trying to invite the big blind to call when I only have 10 big blinds. He, he essentially has 11 big blinds, and he's min-raising with Ace King. I think it would be fine if he made it like 30,000 or 28,000 and then just basically shoved any flop or bet enough to commit no himself to any no flop. No sushi for him. But to make it 21,000, which is a min raise, and then, you know, have to 
get in, in the exact situation that he's getting himself into where he's getting multiple callers. You know, now he, he can get away from the hand, which he shouldn't have put himself in a position where he could have got away from his hand. So I think he should have opened for a, a bigger raise or he should have uh, he should have just shoved and you know I wonder if Gray would I guess Gray would have called anyway if he shoved. Yeah, he probably would have, but at least then you see five cards. Right. A lot of money in the pot. I think he would have. But I still think that it's it's correct to shove or to raise big in that spot. And then, you know, and then Tabby should have shoved all in on this flop. Uh, you know, even though, wow, it looks like, wow, there's the huggy I know. <laughs> well, he's found a way to do this so that Gray doesn't have an easiest, the easiest call in the world with the All best right, hand. Um, I mean, you could say Gray could be saying to himself, that really does look like a 10. I mean, it just, to me, it looks like exactly what he has <laughs> you know two overcards i just don't see him you know checking a 10 there uh right right of you course. know right so if i'm gray i'm i'm snap calling here but you know wow that's <laughs> phil knows what's up phil knows he's tabby was up to a little something something there the way he played it was genius you know he plays that hand any other way he's walking but you say don't be results oriented correct Join us after the break for more from this opening heat here at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Welcome back to the beautiful Palm Beach Casino and it's starting to fill up. The punters have come in for the evening. A little hum in the background and buzz at the bar. And the animal at the table, Phil Locke, who's a couple of tight guys here, but not Mr. Entertainment. He has been an animal. But they're the four hands that are over. The hands are Jack, Queens, Kings, Aces. Huck's calling from the button out of a 20 BB stack. I don't like it. I, I really don't like it. But Grusom has a real hand here. He's got pocket eights. And Grusom, you just tuck and tell by looking at him that he's not really impressed with with hanging around till there's like six or five left. I mean, he knows the value of having a big stack, the winner take all. He's you know, if he runs into a big hand here, good luck to him, right? You right. Know? And I don't think I, I don't think Grusom is getting away from this hand uh, pre-flop. I think he has. Oh wow! He shoves all in. Well, now we definitely know he's not getting away from it pre-flop. <laughs> <laughs> good call. Wow. Tabby had a perfect uh, spot to sh to reshove, but uh, it looks like Grusom took his 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 play away. And that's just. You know, that's a real Annette Oberstadt type of thing that these, these young guys who have seen seven million hands, they're just, fanciness is gone, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is the big stick. Like. I think, I think uh, Philippe's hand is very close between re-raise to induce a shove and just shove all in. I think either one is fine. What if you're both wrong by Raise to 26. A uh, Unabomber raising this one. I mean, Toby is entitled to make a re-raise if he so desires. But maybe he thinks it's a little early to commit his stack. And maybe he thought someone's going to pick up a big one behind him. Heather with the hooks. This is what you're waiting for. Well, she's just counting it out here. She did get Heather Mercer, 15th place in the 25K six max WSOP and 55,000. That's a nearly a minimum re-raise. That's kind of inducing, inducing. 
action. Can you pull in a, uh, let's see, that's very small, yeah. I'm a little surprised by the sizing. Um, Should have been well within her rights to just shove, right? I think, I think the re-raise is, is good, but I think he, she should be re-raising more. Jax is such a dangerous hand, you know, like, it's so easy for an overcard to peel on the flop. And if, if he makes this play here, which is to re-re-raise, then all of his mojo is going to be gone. He's not, right? He's just winding us up, right? Completely. I, I just don't think he's going to do it against Heather. I mean, she's just been, she hasn't been out of line once. She's played very few hands. I mean, maybe... He's just trying to make people think he didn't raise under the gun as weak as he did. Right. That's what it looks like. Oh, my God. What did he I do? was so sure he was winding us up. I don't know what he did. He just but he's called. put chips in the pot, for okay. sure. Okay. It looks like he called, but I can't be sure. He calls, yeah. Wow. See, this is the problem with re-raising small. Horrible jacks. flop for Heather Mercer. Although she is still ahead. And is there any reason for Phil to think he can outplay her on this flop? There is if uh, if Heather plays it really straightforward and checks the flop, you know, Phil might have enough heart. You know, we've seen him make these big bluffs today and he's just he's just been on key. If he if he takes her away from this hand, I mean it's just incredible. Like, wow, here we go. I mean, I think I think Phil's got a chance of taking her away. Now that she's checked the flop, <laughs> you know, oh, Please well. Look it up into space. I think it's the Jin card on the turn. That's probably the best card he could have asked for. Um, that and the Jack of Clubs. I guess, well, Jack of Clubs would be disastrous, but so I would think that that's the best card he could possibly hit on the on the turn. I think he might actually take it, take her off the hand here. And that would just be incredible. I mean, Phil's just made every single Every single bluff he's made has worked so far, and I think Heather might. <laughs> he looks like Stevie Wonder in those glasses a little bit. He just looks like he's staring off into space. Like I mean, I mean, he's not looking at her. He's looking at some point in the distance. Like I mean, wow. He's just he has voices in his head that are just like telling him what to do, and he's just making every right move oh today. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. Pretty sure it's beat preflop. I'll tell you that. Not sure, 100%, but pretty sure. Well, the stacks have moved, although there's still eight of them. Gray, Taba, Tabai, and Seed on the shorties. But look at the leaders. Grissom with 457. The story's been all Phil Locke, though. Doesn't the defending champion deserve them? Yeah, I'm coming back as defending champion. That feels good. Uh, I don't know if you watched it last year, but there was one point where I had like 1.45 or something, a little less than one and a half big blinds. And so it just goes to show you like the fickleness of poker. I know that I'm in there with 48 smart people and I'm pretty practical and I'm pretty cognizant of the fact that it's like, you know, 2% to do it again. I wouldn't come if I didn't think I had some small edge, so I'm gonna say I have more than 2%, but uh, they're super fun to do. Having an accident was not part of my preparation plan. 30 days ago, I was on an ATV, that's an all-terrain vehicle, quad, sort of like a motorcycle, but four wheels, flying through the sand dunes in Oregon. I had a mishap. I flew over a cliff I didn't know was there. The cliff was 28 feet, eight inches tall. I flew like for tw maybe 30 feet. At 35 miles an hour, it collapsed. I broke my, shattered my wrist, dislocated my elbow, which is coming back now. Broke my rib. I had 42 stitches on my eye, if you want to get a close up on the eye. I don't know. Uh, also, this part of my face right here, I can't feel because I severed my trigeminal nerve. I consider every moment now, from the rest of my life, a complete free roll within the free roll. The free roll of life, we all have that. But I almost lost my free roll. So now I'm on a double free roll. So actually, I'm not really married to my results anymore. I was a little married before, but now I'm, I'm married to the result that I'm alive and I can walk around and my spinal cord wasn't severed and I'm feeling good and I can see and I can think. It feels incredible. So the poker's a fun ride within the ride of life and that's my attitude, you know, and you can't ever rob that from me. It feels good. Uh, I just decided, no one can hear me, right? Don't tell the guys that this is what I'm thinking. But I just, 
I don't know, it's so hard to call re-races. And I, because I just, in my last tournament that I just played, I just realized how many times I had to fold to sick re-races. And so I decided in this tournament, I'm going to try and be sicker than I've ever been. I'm going to try and do things that are so outside the box. If I feel weakness or I think I can steal it, I'm just going to just pretend I have two pair and just do it and see what happens. So it's kind of experimental a little bit. Uh, that's not the way I normally play. I'm very, I'm a squared away player, you know, but so we're going for a little something new this time, you know. It promised much and it hasn't disappointed. The banter has been rife and egos have clashed as all of the players try to gain the initiative at the table. Join us next time to find out who comes out on top and gets that final table seat here on the Party Poker World Open 6. Well, my cookie, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Once again, I should have just called. What do you want to see on the flop? That's what I want to know. Diamonds! Okay, just shoot the flop. Please come, diamonds. Come on, let this come home for Philly Boy! Yes! Oh. Okay, that's it. That was a one-off, okay? Don't ask me again. <laughs> John, you never used to be in love, though, did you? You're the only crazy loony that puts 30k in or 60k in without a hand. That's the fun part, though. Yes, this is how you win tournaments.